Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Nunley Math. I'm your host, Aaron Nunley. Thank you so much for joining us here today as we continue our discussion of multiplying polynomials. Specifically today, we're looking at increasingly complex polynomials. Um, we did a day of just multiplying polynomials. We did a couple of days of looking for some special patterns. Now I'm just going to show you how these might look in longer and longer problems. Um, you will notice that uh, once again I do have a homework assignment listed here for my students. That's because we are not currently meeting together. Um, we are all under quarantine here in Ohio so just make sure you're being safe and careful out there. Make sure you don't touch your face. Uh, make sure you're washing your hands, all those good things. Um, but yeah, so this homework assignment is for those students that are in my class so that when they finish their, this video, they can go back and get some practice. I'm sure your textbook has some practice problems as well if you look under multiplying polynomials. Otherwise, if you just go do a Google search for multiplying polynomials, there's an infinite number of uh, possible worksheets out there so you can get some practice on your own. Additionally, I wouldn't normally include these. These are the answers to my students' homework from last night. They are going to pause the video here check their answers, make sure they know what they're doing. If they are having some trouble, they're going to send me a message on our um, on our Canvas page so that um, we can get those questions answered since we are not currently meeting together. So for the sake of being brief, I'm going to go ahead and move on. And I want to talk with you about multiplying polynomials. You will notice that here we have a linear binomial. It's a first degree binomial, two terms, multiplied by a quadratic trinomial, quadratic trinomial. It's quadratic because it's x to the second power. It's a trinomial because there are one, two, three monomials in this polynomial. Um, we learned when we were multiplying binomials that we're going to take this x times everything in the second equation, and we're going to take this 5 times everything in the second equation, or the second polynomial. So we're just going to do the exact same thing. The rules don't change because I changed this to a trinomial. It's going to be exactly the same process, it's just going to take you a little bit longer. So, just like before, I'm going to go ahead and color code this so that you can see what uh, where I'm getting my numbers from. Notice that I'm going to take my x multiplied by my x squared first. Then I'm going to take that same x and multiply it by the negative 3x. And then I'm going to take that same x and multiply it by the negative 2. Notice that I'm uh, adding all of these terms together. If you wanted to change these uh, plus negatives into minuses, you certainly could, but I find that to be more confusing. Once I've multiplied all three of these by the x, I'm then going to mul multiply all three of them by the 5. That's 5 times x squared, then 5 times negative 3, and then 5 times negative 2. And this is what our problem is going to look like. Once again, we're just going to walk through and simplify everything. Notice that we have multiplication, addition, multiplication, addition, multiplication, addition, multiplication, addition, multiplication, addition, multiplication. Order of operations says that I need to do all the multiplication first, so I'm going to multiply these together. x times x squared is x to the third. I then have x times negative 3x, which is negative 3x squared. And then I have my x times negative 2, which is negative 2x. Over here, 5 times x squared is 5x squared. 5 times negative 3x is negative 15x. And 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Now, if I were doing this on my own, not in a video, I would probably skip this entire second row, and I would probably jump straight down to this third row, doing the x times x squared in my head. Uh, some of you may find that shortcut helpful. Others of you may find that if you skip this middle step, you're going to end up making lots more computation errors. That's very much a personal decision. Uh, most math teachers are not going to require this middle step, but certainly for the video it helps because you can see where our numbers come from using our color coding. Now, once we've reached this step, notice I've got a third degree term. This is a cubic term. I have a second degree or quadratic term. I have a linear term. I have another quadratic term. I have another linear term. And I have another constant term. I'm going to go through here. I'm going to start combining the things that are alike. Remember the commutative property says that as long as this is all just one long string of addition, I can rearrange this any way I want. The associative property says that I can, uh, once I've got it rearranged, I can regroup it however I want. So I'm going to walk through this. 
I'm going to say, okay, well, there's my x cubed. I'm going to write it down. Then I'm going to look for, at my x squareds. I have negative 3x squareds, and I have plus 5x squareds. Well, negative 3 plus 5 makes 2x squareds. I'm going to use a negative 2x and a negative 15. I'm going to put those together and get negative 17x. And then I've got that negative 10 on the end. Now, I tend to prefer to have my final answer without all these plus negatives, so I'm going to change that plus negative into a minus, change that plus negative into a minus, and there's your final solution. One word of caution to you, when you go to combine these things, because they're getting longer and longer, you are going to want to come up with some sort of a system to uh, keep track of what things you've already combined and what you have left. You'll notice here that I used colored boxes. That's because I'm typing on a computer. But if you were doing this by hand, you might consider something like, uh, I'm going to circle all the x cubes, then I'm going to underline all the x squareds, and maybe I'll put a box around all the x, just something so you can see what you're putting together. I think you're going to find that's going to, uh, going to help you out quite a bit, because one of the most common errors that people have is they either use a number twice, or they completely forget it's there because there's so many numbers and they just lose track. Again, here's one more example of that. I would encourage you to pause the video and try it on your own, then just restart the video so you can see what's going on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and assume you've already done that. Again, I'm going to color code for the sake of clarity for you guys. Notice I'm going to take this red X and I'm going to multiply by all three things in the first or in the second parentheses. So I did that. Then I'm going to take the negative 3 and multiply by all three things in the second parentheses. So there's the negative 3 times the 2x squared, the negative 3 times the negative 4x, and the negative 3 times the negative 4. Once again, I'm going to simplify this. x times 2x squared becomes 2x cubed. x times negative 4x is negative 4x squared. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. I've got a negative 6x squared a 12x, and a 12. And then once again, I'm going to use my commutative and associative properties to rearrange and regroup this. I'm doing all of that mentally. I've got my 2x cubed. Notice I have a negative 4x squared and a negative 6x squared. I'm just going to add those together. I have a negative 4x and a positive 12x. And I've got that 12 on the end. And once again, I'm going to change that plus negative 10 into a minus 10 because to me, this is just a little cleaner. Notice this was a linear binomial times a quadratic trinomial. I end up with a third degree or cubic polynomial. Anything that's more than three terms, we just call a polynomial. We don't give it a special name. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Uh, hopefully that was worthwhile for you. Um, remember, even though I didn't mention them today, there are four patterns that my students are supposed to be in the process of memorizing. Hopefully they are on top of that. If you have not memorized those yet, please take some time and do that because it will be extremely valuable to you down the road. Once again, if you are one of my students, then you ought to pause your video here and start doing your homework. Um, I will get the answers for those uh, problems up for you. Make sure you're being safe out there. Make sure you're uh, practicing your social distance. Make sure you're washing your hands. Uh, we want you all safe and healthy so we can get back to school here pretty soon, all right? Best of luck to you guys. Take care of yourselves. I'll post the answers to your homework problems on the next video, all right? Catch you later. Bye-bye.